Hello and welcome to another player build. My name is Eran and this is my spiel. Yes, the last two player builds I made were Hexblade based, but honestly, if you want to make a charisma based gish, it's just too good to pass up. So combining various charisma heavy classes into it, it just makes sense. This time, instead of using Hexblade as the main caster combined with another more martial class, I'm going to use Hexblade as a little boost to another not usually frontline oriented class, the Bard, eventually leaning into the College of Swords. The Hex Swords is kind of a spy assassin build, so have that in mind doing it. Firstly, race. Since we're making a charisma heavy frontliner assassin, we need a charisma bonus, a dex bonus, and hopefully a con bonus. So you can't get any better than half elf. For proficiencies, I would take perception and insight here, show up checks that it would otherwise be weak in. Language is builder's choice, I just like Celestial or Sylvan. If you've seen my previous builds, you already know what ability scores to pick with point by. Go 8, 15, 15, 8, 8, 15. We will be aiming for elven accuracy this time as well. A custom background is usually the easiest and most allowed homebrew modification, even in the league. Take the spy background and switch out the gaming set for a tool. This gets you deception, stealth, thieves tools and forger kit. This and the criminal contacts makes you very spy indeed. For a text based spy type, go with rapier, the diplomat's pack, any instrument you wish, leather armor and a dagger. We start off with the Bard because you can get a lot more proficiencies this way, and what we want from the Warlock we get by a subclass anyway. Pick three musical instruments that you like, then Persuasion and Intimidation to round out the face side, and then Sleight of Hand to add to the sneakiness. At first, you also get your Bardic Inspiration, which makes you work better with groups. Then Spell Choice for the Bard should be Utility and Social. The Warlock will provide some defense and offense later on. I went with Mage Hand, and always useful remote manipulation. Prestidigitation has many uses and encourages creativity. Pain, an incredibly useful and underrated spell for messing with your enemies. Cure Wounds, to pack just a little bit of healing. Disguise Self, because you're the face. And Unseen Servant, like Mage Hand but better and it just takes a ritual. Next we take Warlock 1, Hexblade. With it, you get the benefits of Hex Warrior with medium armor, martial weapons and a Hex weapon, and the lovely Hex Blade's curse. Now you should invest in nasty spells like Booming Blade, the best blade cantrip, Eldritch Blast for range, Armor of Agathis for some extra protection, and Old Reliable Hex for extra damage and feeding them to your party's grappler slash pusher. We go whole hog into Warlock now to increase survivability and combat efficiency early. At Warlock 2, take Devil's Sight, one of the Warlock's best invocations, and Armor of Shadows, giving you a 16 AC at all times. Add a shield to that, and that's 18. For spells, take the shield, and you can bump to AC 23 on occasion. Next, we take Warlock 3, pick Pact of the Blade, obviously, Hexblade and Swords, and switch out Armor of Shadows for improved Pact Weapon. You're level 4 now, and you should be able to buy yourself a Breastplate, still keeping your AC at 16. And the magic weapon right now is much more important than magic armor. For a new spell, pick Darkness and you finally have access to the Warlock Invisibility combo. That is, put Darkness on yourself, Devil Sight sees through it, and the advantage-disadvantages scale shifts twice in your favor. Pop that on top of Armor of Agathis and even if they manage to hit you, it's gonna hurt. At Warlock 4, we take Elven Accuracy and fix that Art Charisma score while buffing the Devil's Darkness combo even more. For a cantrip, something nice and utilitarian like Minor Illusion will work, while Suggestion gives us more to play with in social situations or even in combat if sending the big brute on a long walk down a short pier is your jam. Now that we got our first ASI, we go back to Bard all the way. I've had enough of major Hexblade builds. At second level we get Jack of all trades, buffing up skills and the initiative check, we get Song of Rest so you can heal better after combat, and another first level spell. From the Bard's arsenal I like to take Charm Person to use as a low level social spell when you don't want to bring out some heavier guns. With Bard 3 we've hit the college level, and we go, by definition, to the College of Swords. It gives you some frontline proficiencies, but the Hexblade already gave us better. The first thing you choose is your fighting style. There's not a lot to choose from, so I prefer dueling to keep the use of the shield for extra survivability. Then you get the blade flourishes, which you can choose between them at playtime, which is amazingly useful. You also get expertise in two skills you are proficient in, and choose what you wish depending on where you want to go. For a real spy build, go with Stealth and Deception. Since we can choose second level spells, I prefer Shatter for some contained AoE damage. 
At Bard 4, you get your second ASI, upgrading your charisma to max, and you are now the best at everything. Your attack score, social skills, both spellcasting scores, and your ability to keep yourself on this planet are all maxed out because they're the same. You get to pick another Bard cantrip, and there isn't a lot to choose from. I like True Strike, as it allows you, with some clever usage, to set up your first attack to already be boosted with Elven Accuracy. Check with your guide if you can pick up the remastered version from my homebrew collection on D&D Beyond, link down below. For a second level spell, pick up Enhance Ability, it's useful for a ton of different circumstances. Bards at 5th level just get their Font of Inspiration and another spell level. I recommend taking Enemies Abound. It's an intelligence save and that is very rare. Also, the Brutes usually suck at this and you can use it on them to just thrash the enemy line. The Swords Bard get an extra attack like the Hexblade and that's the one we will use. If you forgot, extra attack features don't stack. We also get the Bard's Counter Charm ability, but I think it's underwhelming. In 6 years of playing, I think I've seen it used once. For spells, I say go back to utility and pick Major Image. It's amazing what you can do with the big illusion spells, especially when your save DC is quite high. At 7th level, Bards get another spell level. I think you can drop Unseen Servant at this point, because at 11th level, you probably have better solutions. Take Dimension Door for extra movement and greater invisibility to have your combo not bother other people, or to spread the good feeling of hitting without being hit. When you get your next ASI at 8th level, upgrade Dexterity. Initiative, AC, Stealth, Save, everything goes up. For spells, I recommend Bestow Curse. It's useful in many occasions and should really see more use than it does. Again, a full caster's odd level is just spells, so at part 9 we pick up Hold Monster. The whole spells are just too good to pass up and this one works on everything. Part 10 is a big one. Pick up two more expertise skills, Intimidation for more face shenanigans, and Insight because you want to be able to read people as the face. And then two magical secrets. This is something a friend of mine clued me in on. Because the huge paladin feature is actually a spell, a bard can get it themselves a lot before a paladin reaches 17th level. Find Greater Steed. Ride a Pegasus, a Griffin, or a Rhinoceros, why don't you? Then take Destructive Wave because it's time for another massive AoE debuff spell, and if you have your flying steed, it's even more fun. For Bard 11, you get another cantrip, so why not pick up Vicious Mockery, just for funsies. I would also take Awaken at this point, because it's fun to start building up a beast-slash-plant army, otherwise the only 6th level spell I liked is Bad Suggestion. As a 12th level bound, you get another ASI and take plus 2 to Dexterity, upgrading it to max and improving your initiative, stealth and AC, depending on your armor. For your 7th level spell at Bard 13, I suggest Mordenkainen's Magnificent Mansion. If you're a spy, an out of the way place to stay could be just the right thing at the right time. I always like the idea of renting a cheap room in an inn, casting the doorway inside the closet, and let would-be assassins wonder where the hell you are. You can pick up two more spells at 14th level, and because your second magical secrets feature, they can be from any class. Take counter spell for the first. It's incredibly useful in any occasion, and you're going to be the best at it. Wait for it, I'll explain in a minute. For the second, Tensor's Transformation. This is one of the only builds I found that this spell makes sense for. Two features it provides are virtually useless, but the others more than make up for them. Now, imagine rolling 3d20, taking the highest for each attack for 10 minutes straight, and when you hit, you deal 2d12 extra damage. With some creative uses, this might be up there with Foresight. At Bard 15, you get your 8th level spell. As a bard, pick Glibness. With a minimum of 15 on all charisma checks and a plus 17 on your best skills, that's a minimum 32 deception, intimidation, and a minimum 20 on counterspelling. Yes, you can now instantly counterspell any spell. No need for a check. Finally, we get the last ASI with which we take plus 2 constitution to boost some HP and concentration checks. Alternatively, you can pick up an always useful feat such as Warcaster. And that's it. That's how I would build a Hex Swords. Feel free to comment down below and tell me your modifications. What would you do differently? Would you switch out some spells? An ASI for a feat? I was looking at a telekinetic feat to combo with Booming Blade. What's your take? And if you have any suggestions for other builds you'd like to see, if there's something else you want to see on this channel, let me know. I read all the comments. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Stay good. Have fun.